Biz and Politics show. Just had a couple of great business guests here in studio, but we're going to tack a little bit to the big news right now in health with Joseph Wendelkin with the Rhode Island Department of Health. Joseph, I appreciate you being in yeah, here today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Wanted you to come in to give us a flu update. Uh, we've been seeing national stories, but what's the state of the flu in Rhode Island as we stand here today? Yeah, so it's been it's been a rough flu season. There's lots of flu uh, all throughout the state. Um, so when we look at how much flu activity is happening throughout Rhode Island, we we have five different tiers. Okay. The highest tier is what we consider widespread flu. So we've been at widespread flu since the uh, the start of the month, um, and uh, flu is still out there. There's a lot of flu circulating. Do we have numbers? Do we know how many confirmed the cases of, of flu there have been in the state so far? Yeah, so it's a little bit difficult to count individual flu cases because so many people have the flu. And mm. a lot of times when you go to the doctor and you're feeling like the flu, you're not going to have a lab confirmed test to have, have everything sent out by the time you get it back. You're mm. going to be probably on the mend anyway. So what we do is we work with um, what we call sentinel sites throughout the state. So those are healthcare provider offices, uh, healthcare facilities that give us information based on um, the, the, the kind of symptoms they're seeing in their office. And on, from those Sentinel sites, we're able to make a projection about what we're seeing throughout the state. Okay. In terms of really hard numbers that we see that we actually are able to count, we count um, hospitalizations and also deaths. Mm. So um, sadly, we've had 14 uh, flu-related deaths so far this year. And we've had- You say this year, talking January 118? Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm sorry. So th this flu season. The flu so season. starting in the fall. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so, and then we've also had 532 hospitalizations so far this year. So, are we seeing, are the hospitals uh, prepared to take in this influx of flu patients? And, mm -hmm. you know, what are their concerns when they have flu patients in the hospitals? Yeah, so it's definitely uh, resulted in increased volume at some of the emergency departments throughout the state. Um, it's been the flu, and then we've also been hit by a wave of neurovirus, which is another mm -hmm. um, virus that's very contagious that's resulted in some people going to the emergency departments. So we've been working very closely with, with the emergency departments to try to get the message out to people throughout the state that there are some cases of the flu that do necessitate an emergency department visit, but there are some less severe cases of the flu that you could probably take care of by just getting in touch and seeing either your primary care provider or going to a walk-in clinic. And then also letting people know that less severe illnesses and injuries like maybe say back pain or an ankle sprain, those kinds of things don't really need an emergency department uh, visit either. So if, the, if those kind of visits aren't happening, that can lessen the volume that we're seeing in EDs throughout the state. And you talk again about the emergency room visits, you know, folks see these stories about the deaths and the, mm -hmm. the, the cases that result in that. Is there any recommendation at what point to say you really need to get into the emergency room at this point? Yeah, so there are some emergency warning signs of the flu. For example, if you're having difficulty breathing, you're having chest pain, or if you have flu symptoms, they've gone away, then they come back and you also have a fever and a cough. Those are, are real, real signs that you need to uh, go to the emergency department. But if people are on the fence, they're really not sure, what we always tell people is um, to call your primary care provider. Everyone should have the phone number for their primary care provider. Even if it's after hours, most offices will have a service that'll connect you to a physician. So you'll be able to talk with someone about what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, and, and they can give you uh, guidance on what the next best step is for you. Can people still get the flu shot and should they get the flu shot? Absolutely, absolutely. If people haven't been vaccinated yet, they absolutely should be vaccinated. The flu is gonna be in Rhode Island like every year through the end of the spring. So if people get vaccinated now, they're gonna still get several months of protection. Um, so there's plenty of flu vaccines still available. Um, at every, almost every pharmacy throughout the state, you can just walk in and get a shot. So. We're really trying to get the word out that if people haven't been vaccinated yet, they absolutely should be vaccinated. Has there been, you know, the news saying this shot isn't as effective with this particular strain of flu? Do you think that's dissuaded people from getting the shot? And should they still get it even if this matchup isn't? Is there ever a good matchup? <laughs> yeah, um, well, so I, I'll say that there's no such thing as a perfect vaccine that, that's going to work 100% of the time, year in and year out. And it's possible that when people start hearing news stories about the effectiveness of the vaccine, that might make them um, you know, have doubts about whether they want to get vaccinated. But I will say that the flu vaccine is the best defense that you have year in and year out against the flu. Um, also, if you have, if you got the shot and you do happen to get the flu that year, the vaccine actually makes the case of the flu that you'll have much less severe. So for most people, when they get the flu without the shot, that usually means a week in bed, a week out of work, a week out of school. Maybe it's looking for a childcare provider for, for um, a little one at home for a week. Whereas if someone 
gets the flu shot, and they happen to, to get a case of the flu, it's much, 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 uh, much more mild than it otherwise would be. And so you gave us the update of both the deaths resulting from the mm -hmm. flu to date and the hospitalizations. Is this on par with other flu seasons, or is this an increase? Well, uh, so I had said last year, there were, uh, excuse me, this year so far, this flu season, we've had 14 deaths and 532 hospitalizations. Uh, last year, we had 33 deaths throughout the state and a little over 1,200 hospitalizations. So, um, you know, it's hard to say until we get to the end of the flu season what the total year is going to look like. But, you know, we do see a lot of um, deaths, sadly, and a lot of hospitalizations every year because of the flu. Um, I will say that oftentimes uh, we're talking about people who are either, either elderly or have underlying medical conditions that complicate their situations, but everyone should get a flu shot to protect themselves because the flu is a very serious virus. Anything else you want viewers to know while you're here in Studio One to get the Department of Health and again a lot of attention being paid to mm -hmm. the flu right now, talked about the shots, talked about the numbers, anything else viewers should know while you're here? I would just add that for certain people, the shot is particularly important. So for pregnant women, it's very important. For the elderly, it's important. For people with chronic medical conditions like asthma, diabetes, cancer, the flu shot's very important. And also for healthcare providers too, because they're gonna be in situations, A, where they're exposed to a lot of viruses, and, and B, they're gonna be around people, oftentimes with compromised immune systems. So it's really important that they get that protection. And we've seen in other states them have to close schools based on the flu outbreaks. As if, if it gets bigger, as if, what constitutes an outbreak? <laughs> yeah, so um, the, the, the definition of an outbreak is pretty sp it's specific to each disease. Mm -hmm. um, so we manage situations on a case-by-case -case basis. And if there ever was a situation in a school where you know, the, it really was a bad situation, we would work with the school leadership there to do what needed to be done to, to keep everyone healthy and safe. Okay, well, I appreciate your taking the time to come in today, Joseph, and give folks an update on the flu. I'm sure we'll have you back in the future with other Department of Health updates here in the studio, so I appreciate your taking the time. Yeah, I'd love it. Okay, thanks, thanks Thank Joseph. Okay. I'll let you go around the corner, and I'll wrap up here. Joseph Wendelkin with the Rhode Island Department of Health wanted to have him in, give us an update on the flu so far in Rhode Island this season. Now that dates back to the fall. Let us know that there have been 14 deaths. 532 hospitalizations, but mentioned numbers for last year. Again, we're just at the end of January now. Mentioned that the flu season does go through the springtime, so just urging folks to take precautions and more information from the Department of Health. Appreciate him taking the time to come here into the studio. Appreciate you tuning in today here to go local. At three o'clock, we have the taste talking about Super Bowl fair and Valentine's Day ideas. Rick Simone next week will be back with more about Valentine's Day and of course the Super Bowl this weekend. The four o'clock hour saw us kick off with some businesses here in the state. Matt Olivier with Matt's local pharmacy in Middletown, literally just opened two and a half weeks ago, had been working with the big guys, but why he decided to go back to the basics, a local pharmacy in a world that there's a lot of shakeups in right now. So it's interesting to get Matt's perspective. And then Mike Murphy with Drive It. They, kitted out a facility out in Minnesota to help them get ready with their exterior insulation finish systems in a very quick time frame. He's also got eyes on opportunities here in Rhode Island as well. Now this is the company based here that has a national reputation. I appreciate him taking the time to come into the studio. And of course, Joseph Wendelkin coming in to talk about the flu. We'll be back tomorrow with the three o'clock hour with Molly O'Brien and all things lifestyle. Four o'clock does mean Ray Rickman's big view. The former state rep and deputy secretary of state will be in to provide his video editorial. And then of course, Bob Whitcomb will be here with his latest on his columns and we'll have more guests for you as well. But be sure to read golocalprov.com in between. Check us out on Facebook. We have lots in store for you. We look forward to seeing you back here in studio tomorrow. I'm Go Local News Editor, Kate Nagel.